let me paint a picture. You've decided to try some technical coaching with your team. You've got some ideas about how to get started with learning hours and collaborative coding and improving your legacy code. And everything seems to be coming together. And then your boss asks you, well, how will we measure if this is working? Now that's an important question, but it's not nearly as much fun as planning TDD training. Deciding which metrics to gather is necessary though, if you're gonna keep your boss happy. And it's easy to get caught up in some kind of discussion about measuring the productivity of programmers, which is notoriously difficult. So how should you track your success with technical coaching? Hi, I'm Emily Bates, software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. This video is sponsored by Tupal, who make an app for remote pair and ensemble programming for both Mac OS and Windows. And I'd like to show you just how smooth it is. So I'm gonna call up my friend, Jack, to help me with this bit of code. Hi, Jack. So I can just share my screen with one click and then he can look at the code and help me out. Yeah, I spotted something he wants to change there. And Jack can just dive right in and start editing in my machine on my code. And we can collaborate really well. So uh, do check it out. Go to their website, there's a link in the show notes. First, let's talk about what you perhaps shouldn't measure, bugs. I mean, what we generally want is better software delivered sooner, lower costs. And when you say better software, a lot of people think that means fewer bugs, logical. Of course, technical coaching should increase the quality of the code, which should lead to fewer bugs. So you could measure your technical coaching by measuring bugs. Um, I think there are a few problems with this. Bug count is a measure of the success of the whole system, which is probably bigger than the team who's getting coaching at the moment. Anything I do as a coach to improve code quality is probably going to take a long time to have a significant impact. Increasing the skill of the programmers writing new code won't impact the quality of all the existing code that they haven't touched recently. Bug count is fundamentally a trailing metric. It happens afterwards. But there's another probably bigger problem with using bug counts as a metric. Because particularly when you get a little bit higher up in the organization, managers really don't care that much about bugs. Their concerns are usually much more about outpacing competitor products, cornering markets, keeping investors happy. So they care way more about releasing new features on schedule and within budget than a few defects here and there. The only time bugs would ever figure in their equations is if they're bad enough to affect the stock price or if customers get so upset that they cancel their contracts. And those aren't so much bugs as extinction events, which happen so rarely, hopefully, it's perhaps difficult to use them as a metric. I mean, well, we've had no asteroids wiping out our software this year either. So I guess the coaching must be working. Not a great argument. So instead of bugs, let's look again at how to get better software delivered sooner for a lower cost. Perhaps the next thing to look at is productivity. Now it's actually well known, it's really difficult to directly measure the productivity of software developers. A lot of people have tried, a great deal of research has been done. I recently read this book, Rethinking Productivity in Software Engineering, which is a compendium of essays from a number of researchers summarizing the state of the art in 2019. And my conclusion from reading it was that it is really difficult to measure developer productivity objectively. Certainly if you want to do that to the level of being able to compare different organizations with one another. It is a little bit easier to compare a team or organization with its own past performance, but it's still not that straightforward. I certainly agree with Nicole Forsgren when she says, Productivity remains pretty elusive because it cannot be reduced to a single dimension or metric. Nicole is one of the people behind the new SPACE framework. It's an acronym for five dimensions which are relevant for productivity. I'm not going to describe all of them, but I will pick out the S. Satisfaction and well-being. Developer happiness. I mean, this is relevant since developer well-being is at least correlated with productivity. That is, if you feel good about your job, the chances are you're productive. While if you feel like your job is going really badly and you hate the code, it's probably going badly. 
Now, I'm a definitely a fan of happy coding. And technical coaching will directly impact this area. Developers enjoy the coaching, in my experience, because it improves aspects of the job that they care about. If you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. And if you'd like to find out more about technical coaching, please head over to the Saman Society website and sign up for our newsletter. In itself, becoming more productive isn't generally a goal for the developers. Mostly, we're really motivated by doing a good job at something worthwhile and having fun at work. Money is nice too. But as a motivating force, it only goes so far. Daniel Pink points out that our true motivations, why we get up in the morning, were often about gaining autonomy, mastery and purpose. And if you actually read the research a little bit more closely, purpose is also about connectedness connecting with others as we work together towards a shared purpose. And I think this is particularly true of developers. Technical coaching will directly contribute to mastery since we train skills, and it will contribute to connectedness since coaching helps to strengthen your teamwork. It can make your work more rewarding. What we want to do then is measure well-being, skills and teamwork. And I think that's an easier problem to solve than measuring developer productivity. When I'm coaching teams, we hold retrospectives quite regularly. And as part of that, I ask specifically about five areas where I think coaching should be making a difference. Teamwork and collaboration, writing more and better unit tests, refactoring more safely, better code design, and working in smaller steps, committing more often. And I ask people to assess for themselves whether the coaching has made any difference to these things. Like, was there you know, no change at all? Or are they starting to understand how to achieve this? Or are they getting to the point where they're actually doing it and trying to do it more? Or perhaps they're already getting good results with this and they're gonna carry on after I've gone. Usually I ask everyone in the team to put check marks on a grid like this. And usually I see a response similar to this one that the coaching is making a difference. Now this kind of assessment isn't that difficult to do. You just ask all the developers to what they think and then you can follow up regularly after each block of coaching. I hope that your boss would actually be impressed by these kinds of metrics. But if you think you need something more objective, I suggest you take a look at the FACE framework that I mentioned earlier and also Perhaps your organisation is already gathering some metrics that would be relevant and that technical coaching would eventually impact some of those. But be aware, it might take some time. There might be a delay. You also need to be aware of Goodhart's law because anything you measure and start to use as a target can become gamed. That is, people will work to get better numbers instead of improving anything you actually care about, really and some measurements are more susceptible to that than others. So any numbers that you do gather, you need to back them up by qualitative measures, talk to people, find out if they think things really are improving or if it just appears that way from the numbers. So how do you track your success with technical coaching? Because quite understandably, most people like to see hard evidence that something is working before they continue to spend money on it. Now, the first outcome that you should see pretty quickly from technical coaching is a clear attitude change. People want to learn better coding techniques. They start to see TDD and refactoring as valuable things. So the first thing to do is just ask people what they think of the coaching. Secondly, perhaps after a little while, people start to get that skill. Teams start working together more smoothly and productively. They're creating new code and tests in small increments with high quality. And eventually you should be able to also measure that improved code quality, those increasing numbers of test cases and that more frequent integration. And then after a while of coaching, what you're hoping for is your teams are gonna start meeting their deadlines more reliably. There'll be reductions in those production bugs and fewer calls from despairing developers who are fed up with the code and they want to change their job. And those are all things that you can measure and your boss will care about. Just remember, technical coaching is all about improving developer well-being, skills and teamwork. 
Happy coding. <laughs>